Okay, so the, the success of the Jump Pope has flooded uh, entertainment media headlines for months, and we have uh, the pleasure of having Javier Mendez, he's the head of content division at Media Pro and producer of the Jump Pope. And I'm about to dig into the challenges of uh, you know, bringing and building up this uh, ambitious mm -hmm. co-production. Uh, Javier, bienvenido. Um, so first thing first, how do you, <laughs> how do you build such a, how you develop this project involving so many countries? And how does it fit uh, in the worldwide strategy of, of Media Pro? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for inviting us. Well, first of all, I would like to say that uh, we arrived to this program in the uh, very last minute because the leading producer of this is Wildside, uh, the Italian producer, since it is an Italian story with an Italian creator. Mm -hmm. uh, so at that time, when we, when we read um, the project, we, I mean, we, we made the decision right away because mm -hmm. it was uh, such a, a powerful story and with uh, such an uh, extraordinary creator that we, we thought it was the, the time to be involved in that. At that time, we were starting to design the, our global strategy in terms of uh, development of content, so we thought it was like the best uh, option to start with, uh, with this strategy. Uh, so, whilst had, you know, they decided that they, at that time, they, they already had a pretty built all the financing structure with HBO and all the Sky thing and uh, OECO with Canal Plus in, uh, in France. So uh, we decided to, to get involved with this, um, financing it, uh, co-producing it uh, in Spain, Portugal, plus we have a part of the equity of the unsold territories uh, with it. So the decision was pretty, pretty easy. Mm -hmm. uh, I said that all the the merit of the to get this done is the of the Italian producer. <laughs> mm -hmm. And what about the, the work in progress of coordinating mm -hmm. such mm -hmm. many pieces and to making jump up a, a reality? Well, I must say the most difficult thing is to, uh, with, with American guys, you know, with the HBO guys, you know, they are not not very not very easy. Don't uh, tweet that. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't, don't record that. Uh, no, they are more, uh, you know, they want to be very hands-on and uh, it's quite difficult. But in this case, you know, Paolo is such a He's very auteur, uh, mm -hmm. I must say. So, but it was pretty easy going because with the European consortium, um, we we understood each other pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, with American, it was a little bit more difficult. It is, uh, I think, it's something really. It's easy to understand, you know, because um, the kind of show we are talking about is a very European story. Actually, if you read the, the reviews that. Uh, in the U.S., you know, it's mm -hmm. it, they have been a little bit mixed. Mm -hmm. I think because it's not easy for them for the for American audience. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think that at that time when we were shooting, uh, it was not easy for them to understand what what Paolo wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. But in general, I think uh, it was okay. It came out well, actually. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this takes us to the uh, distribution mm -hmm. because. Uh, um, if I'm not mistaken, the series was premiered first in Italy, mm -hmm. uh, late 2016. It was a huge success. It premiered in USA in January or February? In uh, January, February. January, Even though it, it, was, it was planned to be earlier, but uh, that time, you know, I remember Mike Lombardo, who was the guy who was in charge in HBO, he, uh, he got out from the, from the company. Mm -hmm. uh, HBO was a little bit province at that time with the Westworld, so they decided to postpone uh, mm -hmm the premiere of uh, The Young Pope until January. And in the USA, it had both, uh, you know, enemies of the series and advocates of the series. So it was like quite a uh, division of opinions yeah. between the critics and the, the viewers uh, yeah. about, the, uh, about the show. And here in Spain, it was like the catch show for HBO now when it, you know, yes. it, uh, um, in a Spanish landing. So based on this, uh, international journey and the, uh, the, the opinions and the, and the what the media say about the, the, the show, what lessons do you think we can learn about you know, the, the perception and the, how the show is considered, how European shows, um, a strong European show is considered abroad and in other countries? I think the, um, it is just great. Uh, um, as we can see you know, this morning, um, there are more and more shows and more stories uh, around the world which need to be told. And, uh, I think it's important that somebody mentioned before that we need to be very local. Uh, I think the most important thing is to to, to get good stories, mm -hmm. regardless where it takes place. Mm -hmm. You can have a great story in Argentina or in Madrid or in Iowa or whatever, 
that they will travel. And uh, shows like Narcos or Borgin. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think that 10 years ago that uh, Danish drama about politics in Derma was going to be successful, it would be absolutely mm -hmm. impossible to think about that. And now uh, it is possible. Mm -hmm. uh, in our group, we have produced uh, shows like Vis a Vis, Locked Up. We sold it in more than 50 territories, now including the US and the UK, or Nitiria, mm -hmm. that is presenting now the second season here in Rizados. And we sold it in the US and the UK. And this is something, it was something impossible five years ago. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing is to get good stories, and in Europe, I think we are able to, to deliver them. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, the production scenario is getting really crowded. And let's talk about you know the uh, companies we've been uh, speaking about today: Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, uh, YouTube, uh, and they have boosted such a like a, a global, a worldwide audience. And um, how do you think this affects the the, the business of, of, of fiction? making fiction and trying to appeal to, to a global mm -hmm. audience. Is it changing uh, via the type of projects you're uh, investing in, the acquisitions mm -hmm. and uh, the strategy of distributing the content uh, mm -hmm. throughout, the, throughout the countries? Well, I think it is, uh, I mean, the question if there is a bubble of, uh, of fiction around the world. Uh, I think that two months ago there was an article in Variety that says that in the US, 500,000 500, yeah. 500, shows were going to be produced uh, this year, plus the European and the rest of the world. That sounds uh, a really big number. Mm -hmm. But it's true that uh, I think it's time for you know, the fiction time. You know, you go in the tube and uh, everywhere, everybody's watching uh, content. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, maybe fiction is like the, the new books of, the, of this century. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, we will see it. Uh, soon. In terms of our company, we are a very story-driven company. We always try to, we, we don't think about if, if this is going to work internationally or not. Mm -hmm. We think in finding good stories. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a good story, it will travel, that, that's for sure. But do you think there's still room for so much television, so much uh, fiction, TV? It's a, it's a tough question, I know. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> well, I've just arrived from the Series Mania uh, this week, and um, it's overwhelming, you know. You see that, that there are lots and many, many, many uh, series around. But it's like films. Uh, when you go to the Cannes Film Festival, you see thousands of projects around, mm -hmm. and you know that not all of them will be made. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to happen the, the same with, mm -hmm. the, with the series. But at the moment, uh, production companies need a like a very strong and a very appealing upfront of, of content to be a, a, a strong actor in mm -hmm. the in the business of, of making fiction. Yeah, TV. no, there is a strong demand of, of content for sure uh, mm -hmm. all over all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, so the the key question is the, to have the, the talent to attract the talent mm -hmm. and to identify the talent and the good stories. Mm -hmm. And what about the fragmented audience? Because we are working on a, a global storytelling, but also we have more and more uh, tiny little audiences and, and, and taste communities. Netflix was uh, releasing this uh, report like two weeks ago. They say they have identified 113,000 you know, uh, communities of taste, and they're producing for very specific audiences. Mm -hmm. So we think we can still think about a mainstream audience, or we need to start thinking about making shows for specific audiences. Again, sorry for being so just I think we need to find good no, stories. There are tough questions, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's just, I, we need to find good stories with uh, very good characters. Uh, and I think that's the, that would be the, the secret. Mm -hmm. You have good stories with great characters, uh, mm -hmm. people will like it. Mm -hmm. um, now, with uh, these international operators, it will be easy to reach broader audience. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's going to be like long tail business. You know, people are going to start discovering uh, certain series, as uh, we can see with, the, with our local series. Um, for, uh, for example, like La Roja or uh, Locked Up Vis a Vis, you know, is the, when you include in Netflix or these kind of operators, they start to, to talk about uh, when social networks and, you know, it's a long tail thing. And what about the lessons learned from the Season one about the, uh, the the good things and the bad things and just what's coming up for this, uh, season two. How are you facing uh, season two? 
marketing production. Of the young Paul? Yeah. Um, well, uh, in this case, you know, Paolo is, uh, as I mentioned before, he's very, he's very outdoor, uh, you know, so you're not going to, to teach him how to, to go this way or that way. Uh, in this case, this show who has a very clear idea about where the show uh, must go in trying, and it's to, to get deeper in what um, he was proposing in the first season, you know? Mm -hmm. Faith and the human being and uh, the role of the church in the, in the world. And it's gonna be something, it's gonna, it will make people talk about it mm -hmm. again, which again. is, I think, one of the main things of the, our objective. Actually, our Twitter industry. was kind of panicking because uh, uh, Paolo is now involved in a, in a, in a film project. And yes. People was panicking because like, what about season two of Jump Pope? What's going to happen with, with, <laughs> with the Jump Pope? Um, this takes me again to the, the, to the, uh, the topic of perception, how the American people, how the, maybe the American people, the American market perceives uh, European uh, productions. Uh, you said uh, the, the relationship there very, uh, wasn't very, uh, very smooth with, with HBO. They are very confident about what they want. And uh, how, do you get to, how do you get along with uh, this uh, you know, back and forth in the mm -hmm. relationship with, with HBO, which is a strong competitor in the US, mm -hmm. and how they want to market even the show mm -hmm. for the American audiences. How do they, how did they market the, the, the show for American audience? Was it really different from how you market here? Well, they market as an, an HBO show, you know, HBO, they have their, their brand. And mm -hmm. uh, when you see an HBO uh, on the screen, you, you know what kind of show you're gonna, you're gonna watch. Mm -hmm. Very character driven, very strong stories. I think in the US, uh, there's a huge difference uh, between uh, the audience, mm -hmm. uh, there's like the broad audience of the free TV audience, so they always try to make very, very general, very broad uh, shows, whereas on, on cable, you know, they are more focused on the, something more specific and more high-end uh, shows. Mm -hmm. And that's the HBO uh, niche. Mm -hmm. uh, now with, Net with the appearance of Netflix or Hulu or Amazon, they realize that uh, there's a lot of people uh, in the US um, demanding uh, not so broad uh, shows, mm -hmm. uh, even though there are still a lot of uh, very broad shows. And every May we go to LA to, for the screenings and we watch, you know, the, their pilots for CBS and Fox and etc. And you still see, uh, you know, these uh, general uh, shows. So uh, there's a huge difference uh, now. So I think it's there's room for for every kind of story. Mm -hmm. And did you have a, a specific target in of audience in your mind when you uh, decided to produce this show? Say okay, we're uh, focusing on um, maybe people in the people in the 30s, in the 40s. Uh, do you have a, a specific target in your mind? No, not really. Uh, we always try to identify uh, and again a good story, a good story that we understand that it needs to be told mm -hmm. or something that we think it will, uh, that will create some kind of uh, discussion uh, among the audience. Mm -hmm. That for us is really important. Uh, it's stories that we think that can change things at some point. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, it will trouble. If we, we, we get that, that aim, it will, it will trouble for sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, once we identify the story, then we start to think about, you know, with, uh, which kind of audience we're gonna, we're gonna get. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I don't know if anyone in the room has uh, questions, or, or I keep doing a lot, I have a lot of questions, so <laughs> if anyone, I, I know, People wanted to make some questions about the jump up. So, anyone in the room with questions for Javier? No? Wow, everyone's shy today. No? No one? No hands raised up. Okay, so it's just. Lunch time. Yeah, it's time. <laughs> lunch time. Uh, I know it's, it's late. Um, I don't know about, you know, I'm, I'm more on the, on the marketing side of, the, of, of, of broadcasting, and uh, I. I'm, I'm very conscious about how the show was marketed in the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, but what about Italy? I'm, I have not a clue about how the show was uh, marketed uh, market in, 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 uh, in Italy, and um, being such a Catholic and strong Catholic country, uh, how it was uh, marketed in, there in Italy? 
Well, I think you have two extraordinary elements to market this uh, the show. Uh, on one side, you have, uh, I mean, the, the character itself, you know, Pope. Mm -hmm. There is no more Catholic uh, country in the world than Italy. And on the other hand, you have uh, um, such a great actor, uh, author, author like uh, Paolo Sorrentino. Mm -hmm. So it's here, like, if you, can you imagine if Pedro Almodovar produced a And a you, had, you had the Vatican say, no, you can shoot in there, so you have to build up a, a whole, yes. you know, yeah, yeah, a yeah, whole yeah, room for it. But uh, I think there are certain issues in the society that uh, <laughs> We have the, the that needs to be told. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like here uh, in Spain, with things like politics that mm -hmm. we mentioned before. Uh, I think there are many produce production companies that we try mm -hmm. to produce uh, series about politics, but it's impossible uh, for the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, even though I'm sure that there are many people in the audience that would love to see uh, a show about politics, mm -hmm. or I'm sure in the next five or ten years we're going to see a lot of. Uh, series about terrorists. Mm -hmm. Now that it's over here, but for the moment, uh, it's no time. So when you have something really an issue, a topic, mm -hmm. really polemic, and you get it and you put it together with a great um, director, you know you have it. And uh, what's up? Uh, what's next for Media Pro after you know making mm -hmm. such a, a challenging co-production? What's next for for Media Pro? What do you have your eyes into right now? <laughs> well, now we Spoilers. are in, in the group. We are uh, pretty active on the domestic side. Uh, we are we are we are presenting the second season of Nididia, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to be premiere I think, on Monday. Um, Glo with Glow Media, we are producing a couple of new dramas. One for a media set called uh, El Accidente, and another one for Televisión Española, which is called uh, Estoy Vivo. Uh, on international side, we are developing a project with YLE uh, um, because we discovered that there is a huge community. Finnish Everything is connected here. <laughs> <laughs> There's a huge Finnish community in Fuengirola, in Malaga. So, really? Yeah, so we are developing a Nordic noir uh, story in Fuengirola. In Fuengirola. Uh, I think it's going to be an extraordinary. It's called The Paradise. It's going to be a and we are enjoying very much working with, uh, with Wiley and with the Finnish creators. We are also developing a project with, uh, with DirecTV mm -hmm. uh, in Latin America, uh, based in a book uh, written by Javier Tebas, you know, the president of La Liga. It's a story about the world of corruption uh, in football. Wow. And, uh, so written, That's a, a tough, yeah. tough topic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been written by Eduardo Sacheri, you know, the guy who co-wrote uh, The Secret of My Eyes with Campanella, and the showrunner is going to be Daniel Calparsoro. Um, um, we have just presented in Series Mania another project called The Head that we have just pitched, and we start to look for uh, partners, and uh, fortunately we had a very good reception there. Um, Oh, well, we have very many. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have many, many projects in the. So uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, being with here tonight. No questions? No, not at all. So thank you so much. No, for you're welcome. Being here.